What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. I'm very, very excited about this. I think this is a really, really high quality game and I've been watching this one with interest for about the last two years. I think we've covered it twice previously, but it's out in 1.0 now. The game is called Rising Hell. The game is a vertically ascending real-time roguelite where the ultimate goal is to escape from hell. You start out the absolute bottom of the pit and your goal is to climb all the way to the top while hacking, slashing, and annihilating every single denizen of the devil that will get in your way. Uh, this game is very, very well crafted. It's a good game. And so anyways, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, you can check it out down below in the description. I'll have a link for you down there so that you can wishlist it. Aside from that, you can also check out my Discord, you can check out my Twitch stream, you can check out my Twitter and all my other stuff down there. But before I get too far into the spiel and like shilling it up, we'll go ahead and start playing the game. Uh, there's three different modes. You can play Conquest, there's Gauntlet, which is kind of like a challenge mode, and then there's the weekly challenge that goes through that has unique modifiers. Pretty much standard fare stuff right here uh, for rapid fire, kind of 15 minute long roguelites. Uh, we'll go for conquest mode real fast. From here, we're going to get to pick our character, and there's three of them to select from as of right now. You've got Aerok. He's a melee brawler, and honestly, I think he's probably the best character in the game. He does have some drawbacks. There are some bosses and whatnot that have, like, very close effect AoEs that will really smash you, and he tends to fall victim to those because he just has no... He has no ability to get away. He's by far the slowest character. So if you go in, you have to be absolutely sure that you've got an opening. Uh, we have Zelos over here. Zelos is kind of a weird character. He's got a little laser cannon. I'm not a massive fan of him, but he is very agile. He moves very fast. The downside is that he's got low HP. And then we have Sidna. Sidna is kind of a hybrid between the other two. Uh, Sidna has like a medium range attack that also self tracks. I would consider her to be kind of the equivalent if you like the Huntress in Risk of Rain. You You'll probably like her because she's kind of similar. She's high mobility. Uh, her All of her attacks kind of track, and so there's really no need for you to be crazy accurate. Uh, the downside is she's got low HP and she doesn't deal a lot of damage unless she has artifacts available to utilize. Uh, for right now, we're probably going to have time for two playthroughs, so I'll do Aerok first, and then once we inevitably die playing Aerok because I get overly aggressive, we'll try out a different character. Uh, we also get to pick ourselves a weapon as we go in. Uh, the weapons are not so much like buffs as they are kind of modifiers to the core gameplay. So if you take the Demonic Hellsbane, this is just the default. There's no modifiers. If you take the Pyre Brand, it means that artifacts, which are kind of limited edition power-ups that you find on the way up on your climb, it means that they will lo they will be much more powerful, deal way more damage, but they last not very long, basically. Uh, this is great for boss killing, not so great for level clear. Uh, we've got the Devil Hoof. It makes you move faster and jump better, but it punishes you by taking more damage from spikes because you've got more velocity. And then I haven't unlocked any further ones down on into the chain. Uh, the Blight Disc right here is an interesting one because it allows us to get more Blight, which is basically the meta currency of the game. In the top right corner, you can see that I have like those little purple crystals. Those are what you use to unlock new stuff and new things, and you don't get a lot of them unless you're getting like far into the game. This is like kind of a progression item that we can afford. This one right here makes you start with less life, but you start out with some currency to spend so that you can get some early game artifacts to make you a little bit more powerful. And it's really up to you. I actually don't tend to modify my character much at all. I tend to go with the default. Uh, the downsides are usually in this game about equal to the benefits, and so I kind of just keep it loosey-goosey and take the stuff that I start out with. Now, there's a couple things you need to know about Hell Rising, or I'm sorry, Rising Hell. I got things backwards. I don't know, dude. I got like verbal dyslexia right now. I don't know. So anyways, those are red souls that we're collecting from these little hell porters right here. You do have a combo in the top right corner. I don't know if the combo actually increases your yields that you get from killing stuff when it comes to souls or if it's just like a personal challenge for yourself, but it is there. Uh, we just picked up our first artifact. It's the Shocker Claw. It makes us shoot AoE lightning everywhere when we attack. Everything in this game is really, really satisfying, and one thing I like about this game is that it's not afraid to let the player feel powerful. I've gone on rants about this in the past during my videos, but I do think the secret to making like a really satisfying game, if you're in the power fantasy genre, is to know how to make the player feel powerful while at the same time vulnerable. Simultaneously giving them the ability to wipe the entire screen all at once for a limited duration and feel badass is a good thing, so long as the difficulty is there to make you feel vulnerable on the in-betweens. And this game kind of like nails that. It hits it right into the pocket. In the top left corner, we've got our HP. That's going to be the green meter. Pretty self-explanatory stuff right there. The yellow meter. Underneath that is going to be the amount of charge that is left in the artifact that we picked up on our way 
up. At the end of every single level, you're going to have the opportunity to pick yourself up an upgrade. Uh, so this time around, we've got Death Crisis, so that'll increase our Green Soul drop rate when our life is below 50%. Green Souls give you your health back. Uh, we've got Life Greed over here. This just flatly increases the rate of healing drops by 25%. They are pretty rare in this game, so I wouldn't expect maximum dividends from that, but it will be helpful. And then we also have Fell Forge, which is an all-around good upgrade. Just increases the ability for you to smash demonic face by 20%. You can only pick one of these, so you gotta pick carefully if you've got a lot of currency. I'm torn between the healing and Fell Forge. Fell Forge is a good pickup, though. Like, it's a universally good pickup. If we end up not taking a lot of damage on our way up the spire, then I think we'll probably be ready to rock. Like, the only the other thing is only useful if we're actually taking damage. So I guess I'll just have to get good for this playthrough and assume that I'm going to be rad as hell and I'm going to knock this one out of the park. At the end, it's going to give us a little score tabulation. I tend to just skip it and, and get on in. I mean, I love the soundtrack for this game, too, man. It is, like, booming right now. Now, a core mechanic of the game is that little spin move you just saw me do. That's called a hell break, if I remember correctly. And so, like, when you're jumping, if you hold down your jump button, any enemy that you come into base contact with, you will automatically execute, and it'll give you a little bit of elevation to get up a little bit higher. And this is a mechanic that you are going to have to master the nuances of. And honestly, that's a good thing, because the mechanic is designed in such a way that it's consistent. Mechanics like that have a tendency in games to sort of like backfire if implemented poorly and if implemented properly They tend to be the defining thing that makes the game good and in this case I'm I'm pleased to report Ooh, that door was in my way. Uh, maybe I should have taken the healing upgrade never rely on splatter cat to get good, but anyways uh, when executed properly, it can be the make-or-break mechanic that makes a game good, and in this case, I'm pleased to report that it is the latter and, and not the former. It's one of those things that's tremendously satisfying to pull off a big chain of hell breaks, driving up your combo, getting a ton of souls, and killing everything on screen. Uh, let's go... We got Deathstalker, so that makes it so we don't slide down walls when we're wall grabbing, and then it also allows us to execute a hell break from the wall. That's sort of interesting, but I don't know if I'll use it. We have Shock Wrath. That allows us to let off an AoE Lightning just like the artifact gives us whenever we take damage. And then we have Killing Four Enemies Within Seven Seconds Will Restore 4% of Your Life. That's a really good artifact. That's actually a super slept on artifact, but we can't afford it for right now. So I'm going to take the Lightning Burst. Okay, so upwards and onwards we go into Hells for Nachi. Let's get on in here. Uh, let's kill these guys off right here. I love the animation. I think the pixel art for this game is really, really fluid. Uh, I think it feels and looks really, really good. They did a great job with the sound design. Honestly, as I've been playing this game for like a couple of hours prior to recording this for the final 1.0 checkup, it, it, it's one of those things where I was struggling. Like when I go in, I'm actually like consciously trying to find ways to sort of like disassemble the game and like find flaws with it. And while that might not seem like a very positive way to go on in, the way that I view it is that like my viewers are potentially going to vote for this game with their wallets. And so ultimately if I'm making somebody else's money ride on my recommendation, I would prefer to go into my analysis of the title a little bit more aggressively just to be on the safe side. And like I've been extolling the virtues of this game for a while and I've been waiting for it to have some kind of like tangible flaw where I'm like, this is wrong with the game, you know what I mean? And like honestly, there's only one thing that I can pick on this game for. Uh, and that thing is, the game has bad keyboard controls. Uh, the game's keyboard controls are relegated to the WAST keys, the space bar, and the J and the K keys, as I recall. And I just, I don't like that two hand on keyboard style of gameplay uh, for, for platforming and like moving upwards and for like precision movement. I, I find that that fails me a lot of the time. Now you might chalk that up to me just not being good with the control scheme. And I, I guess I would agree to concede that that's largely a subjective point. Some people might be good at playing games that way and, and they might like playing games that way, but I'm not one of them. So for me, that's kind of a major negative. The the upshot is the game plays absolutely magnificently with an Xbox controller or any other USB controller that you might have. So like for right now, I'm playing with an Xbox controller and it's seamless, it feels tight, it feels tactile, everything feels right where it needs to be. Uh, the vibration feedback is good. I got rid of the screen shake, which inside the options, we can actually, actually I can't see the options from here. We'll show that after we die. But anyways, the game does have kind of customizable screen shake and stuff like that. Uh, just in case you wanted to, oh, we got the same thing twice. Nice. Well, I'll take the one that gives me more healing then. 
I just admitted that I was going to end up needing that, and so if I don't pick it up right now, I think it's kind of a big bonehead move. Uh, we can go to the Trials of the Necropyre or the Slaughtering Spire. Let's go to the Necropyre. Alright, so inside the Necropyre. Hopefully you all don't mind that I'm sort of like skipping over, I, I guess, the little animation por uh, for the score tabulations and whatnot. Uh, not really something I'm into watching. Uh, we got to go up on the left side right here. Okay, let's focus on gaining some altitude right here. I'm not going to focus on kills and red souls. I'm just going to focus on sort of staying ahead of this little challenge. Oh, I could have gone up from where I already was. Well, that's real unfortunate. I would like to have that artifact right there if I can get my hands on it. Ooh, that was a good execution right there. I like it. Okay, let's go up over here. Try and wipe you out real quick. We got a good chance for an execution right there. Decent chance right there as well. Lots of red souls coming in. Almost kissed the buzzsaw on that side, which would have been really, really bad for me. It looks like we got a couple of buzzsaws over here. Apparently Satan, big fan of woodworking, actually. He has that in common with the old JC. Uh, let's see here. So we've got a couple new things. We don't really have a whole lot of souls to spend. Uh, actually, we can't afford anything on the list right here. Kind of a bummer. Uh, I don't like missing out on upgrades. We can use the blight that we've accumulated over the course of this run to go to that little purple node right there and recycle all of them. But since I haven't unlocked everything, I tend to kind of like prioritize holding onto my purple souls above everything else. And so onwards and inwards we go to the first boss. It's going to be Dagon. Uh, Dagon is... He's somewhat challenging. I think the bosses in this game have a good difficulty curve while at the same time uh, maintaining the ability to be red and not feeling unfair. If you get overly aggressive in this game, you will get punished. And right there, for example, I didn't read that attack, and so I got punished. It's my own fault. Uh, be, be forewarned, on occasion in this game, it is going to cue your actions. Uh, so this game does have cued button presses. And what I mean by that is if you hit the, if you hit the key like three or four times, it's going to sort of like cue that up to lesser or greater extents, and you may be locked into a position longer than you'd like to be. Uh, this phase is a little bit risky. Oh, no. I thought I was going to eat that one right there. And he's going back. Oh, that's bad. Oh, my God. We got so lucky right there. Uh, I would like to be over here, and I'd like to get some serious damage off on this guy if I can. There we go. Very, very nice. Failed to read that attack again, unfortunately. Uh... I always struggle with that attack. It always seems to get me. All right, let's focus on ads for a minute. I don't want the entire screen to devolve into, like, this melange uh, of sort of, like, bullets. Definitely don't want to get hit right there. We'll hell break from right there. Uh, nope, walked into that one. Feels bad. Big laser going out. Let me see if I can finish him on off here. Uh, hopefully, yeah, he went right with it. If he went left with it, we were going to get tagged. And there's our kill. Our first boss is a Downsies. I really got to learn to read that AoE attack right there with the little blue bullets. It catches me all the time. Whole bunch of red souls to go along. A little bit of blight for us to take home, add to the bank account, and the chapter is over. At the end, it's going to give you a score tabulation right here. It took us a little while because I was explaining things, so we're going to get a bad score. But all in all, I feel like we did okay. Uh, we can get some extra blight right here. We can get 100 bucks, or we can get some health. I'm going to take the health. I nearly almost always take the health. If I get the full 40 points out of it, I almost always take the health. Because you never know. The game can be a little bit spiky from time to time. Uh, nothing in the game instantaneously eliminates you. Uh, but from time to time, I just, I'm a real aggressive player. And what I know about myself is that in my, in my aggression, I tend to get myself smacked here and there. And it adds up quick. I mean, we're already down like 20 health on this run, so something to think about. We've got a Vault of Avarice over here. This is basically going to be a bank where we can get a whole bunch of red souls if we can conclude the challenge that precedes it. And it doesn't look that bad in here, so I think we're going to be alright. I didn't know if those bullets were going to go through walls. Sometimes there's bullets in this game that absolutely will go through walls. Uh, yeah, I'd like for you to be dead. That sounds like something that's satisfying to me. I thought he was going to shoot something right there. Oh, that one did, though. Weak, dude. We've gotten, like, no defensive upgrades. That kind of concerns me, but I figure we'll figure it out. Uh, we do have a lightning claw. Ah, got me with a point blank right there, dude. Once again, too aggressive for my own good. Uh, I could use one of those fabled storied healing orbs right here if you got one for me. That's what I would love to have. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to give it up. I'm going to try and kill everything I can on the way up so that maybe I can pick up a couple of green orbs. Luckily, oh, I lost my I lost my lightning claw. Now we've got the infernal claw. The infernal claw is going to give us a big finishing attack at the end of our combo, and then it lights things on fire and causes explosions. It's decent. I like the lightning claw the best, though. The lightning claw is by far my favorite add-on. All right, so we've got Corrupt Core. Improves the duration of your artifacts by 5 seconds. Increases your attack buyer by 12% for every enemy around you. Increases green soul drop rate when your life gets down to 50%. Yep, I'm going to go for the option that preserves our life and keeps us alive a little bit longer. Most of the boss fights in this game have adds, and so there's a consistent form where you can kind of like farm if you need to to get health back up. And so I think that's going to pay back for us really, really well. All right. Couple good kills right there. Couple good heals right there. Oh. Okay, so these things are putting out gases. We gotta, we gotta give them the old killsy. So that one's down, and the other one looks like it died from our burn. So that worked out pretty good for us, actually. We only lost a little bit of health right there. Uh, I would have liked to have come out of it unscathed, but the game does a pretty good job with those little challenges. Like there's things here that I haven't seen before, and other sort of roguelites, like the room filling up with poison gas or whatever. And it's really just a time attack. But instead of being uninteresting about it and just giving you a timer, uh, they actually make the room fill up with gas, and it gives you kind of that visual feedback that, like, hey, you know, you need to get this done. And I think that's a really, really good choice. I'm always in big favor of show, don't tell inside of games, and I, I think that that's a good point in that direction. Ooh, that vault right there, though. Feels good. Hacking vines. Yeah, we got another artifact right there, too, the Annihilator Claw. That gives us a lightsaber. Uh, it adds like a green laser onto all of our attacks and then like a big laser finisher. It makes our hell break a lot larger as well so that you can AOE multiple enemies down with one swing. We want to watch out for the spikes on the ceiling right there. That's kind of one of those gotchas that you got to watch out for. Uh, it's kind of one of those little health drains. The spikes can sometimes blend into the environment with all the greens and everything else. It can be a problem. So we said have increased the attraction radius. So that's our suck uh, for red and green souls. We have Power Surge, so if we have more than 50% life, we have basically a quarter more attack. Every time we get 100 souls, we can increase our damage by 50% for 20 seconds. Uh, since we can't control when we're going to pick up 100 souls, I think I'm going to go with this one right here. All right, and then we continue going upwards. I think we're actually on pretty good course to do a second boss attempt, which is good for this game. Like This, this game is challenging. It's got a difficulty curve to it. This is absolutely like a game that's not going to let you just walk through it without getting punished. Uh, it's a game where you kind of have to think about it and use your abilities to the, the best of your ability. Uh, let's go up here. Wipe this dude out. Very, very nice. We're almost at a laser claw, which bones me out, but it looks like we've got a lightning artifact right here. Block damage. Oh, we've got a shield. Never mind. Okay, I don't know if I've actually seen that artifact. No, 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 no. Oh, weak, dude. I wanted to go to the Vault of Avarice. Uh, so what has happened right here is this game, you know how most games typically they allow you to press down and A to go back down through a platform? This game does not have that. Once you ascend past a platform, you can never go back down again. You are stuck. Uh, and that's actually part of the, gore, the core gameplay as well is because there's kind of these decision-making paths where you've got to make a call. Do I go through the door or do I go upwards to the next platform? Uh, let's see here. Last attack combo deals double damage right there. That's pretty sick. Killing an enemy has a chance to restore your artifact, or your attacks have a chance to restore his life based on damage dealt. We're already all in on kind of like this heal regeneration build, so I feel like continuing to solidify and circle the wagons in that direction is a really good idea strategically. On we go. I think we've got Beelzebub next. Oh, never mind. We're not at Beelzebub yet. Okay, so Beelzebub is up next. Perfect, dude. We're getting so much healing right now. Love it. Love it. All right. Let me see if I can grab this artifact. Oh, we've got Beleth the Tainted. Okay. Uh, this guy is actually kind of a challenge for, for Aeroc, Uh because this guy's got lots of attacks that are sort of like ranged. And so he has the ability to kind of like hector you and annoy you from a distance and then block off movement paths. And it can just, it can become a problem. No healing right there. 
see if I can. Ah, I wanted to get off a hell break, but he's popping off his little clusters at moments where I don't want to deal with them. I saw that one coming. Let's just stay up and off the ground for right now. I feel like taking this guy slow and just exercising some caution is a really good plan. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this guy sort of, when you're playing against him as Air Rock, you've got to be a little bit less aggressive and just sort of get the hits in where you can. There we go. Let's finish him right there. A little bit of healing to take care of the scuffing that we took during the fight. And we only have 200 souls. We can go 25% damage on artifact weapons. Or we can go Artifact Monsters also give you Red Souls. The Artifact Monsters are the ones that are carrying the power-ups. Normally they don't give you anything, but this makes them drop a couple souls. It's kind of like a stipend. I think I'm going to buff myself up with my Artifacts. Uh, we haven't put a whole lot into aggressive strategies yet, and so there we go. Beelzebub's Lair. I knew we would get here. This guy's tough. I don't beat him consistently because I get overly aggressive like an idiot. Oh, there's spikes up there. Yeah. Come on, give it to me. Ah, oh, you got me with the lightning. Okay, we got to move around a little bit. I think he only does three lightnings, and there's phase two. All right, so, oh, I didn't plan that attack. That was my fault. So really, ideally, what you want to do with this guy is you sort of just want to juggle and, like, stay out of the way of all the stuff that can hit you. Uh, easier said than done, though, as you can see. Man, this guy always gets me. Even when I go in with full health, I get wrecked by this guy. Yeah, I'm just, I get locked into my attack combo, and you can't dodge out of your attack combo. Once you initiate it, you initiate it, and it's the openings are razor thin on him, and I always just, I mess up the timing. Every single time, I mess up the timing. I just can't seem to get him. So there you go. You can see the progression that takes place in between runs, and now we can check out a new character. Uh, I think I've showed off Agony previously when we've played the game. I'm sorry, not Agony. I think I've showed off uh, Zelos. Uh, so I think maybe we'll go for Sidna right here. If you beat the game, there's redemption mode. What does that do? Three chances of redemption. One is reduced every time you die. Increases the amount of experience and blight gain. Does not unlock new agony levels. Okay, so agony levels are kind of like new game plus modes. Uh, but Sidna's kind of interesting. The only thing I don't like about her is that she doesn't hit hard, like, at all. Uh, so, like, you kind of got to watch out. She has these little balls that she throws at things. The game auto-tracks enemies. Uh, they stick to the enemy, and they're sticky bombs. They blow up when the duration is done. Uh, having a ranged attack does give her a little bit more room to sort of evade the enemy and stay out of the way, and so that's going to be like one of her strengths. She's not quite as long range as Zelos or whatever his name is, but she does give you a little bit of leeway. So, for example, that little poison guy we fought would have been a lot easier with her than with, you know, Aerok. So there is variation in between the characters, which I think is important. You want them to be distinct from one another. She does still maintain the core gameplay mechanic of being able to hellbreak enemies. Uh, so don't forget that you have that in your toolkit. Doombringer, we got an Infernal Claw. Okay. Give us a little bit of explosive power. I probably should have gone for a hellbreak right there, actually. That probably would have been the better strategically sound option. Uh, the artifacts do interact with characters in different ways, so the benefit that Aerot gets from an artifact might be different than what uh, Zerot gets or what Sidna gets or whatever her name is. Uh, so keep that in mind, too. We'll go... Let's go with the Green Soul drop upgrade. I feel like it didn't do us dirty last game. I feel like it came through every single time we needed it to come through, and the only time that it didn't is when we got to an area there, there where the boss did not have a lot of ads, and so I feel pretty confident about it. All right, a couple little enemies down here. Throw some sticky bombs on them. Hopefully that gets the kill. It did not get the kill. It's a bummer, but, you know, sometimes you don't get what you want in life. Life is all about disappointment and whether or not you have the heart and the character to get through it. A little spike pit action right there. Take him out. Uh, we do have a Vault of Avarice right there, but before we go, I'd like to grab the artifact, and then we'll try out the Vault of Avarice just to see if we can stack up a few more red souls to throw on into our collection, which at this time is becoming, you know, pretty good. 
Uh, there's only the one vault in here. I don't want to be greedy, but I was hoping we'd get a little bit more out of it. Oh, well. Uh, I do like that the game, so because there's like a little animation when you get into zones, uh, in most games what would happen is that would give the enemy free, you would either have to freeze the enemies in place, which looks really unsatisfying in combination with sort of like the animation that's playing, or what the developers have done is they've made it so you just detonate when you go through a door and it auto kills everything around you, which like I said sort of feeds into that idea that your character is a powerful demon trying to escape from hell and not necessarily like a normal guy. Uh, let's go with, we got a 20% damage reduction right here, and I think that's just too good to pass up on at that price. For 80 souls, that just feels like a steal to me. Come on. Die for me, please. It's not personal, it's just that I need your soul, okay? You gotta hand that over. You gotta give me the certificate of authenticity along with it, too. I get far too many counterfeit souls in these deals. Oh, he did the charge attack right there. I didn't see him charging it up. Yeah, a bit of an accident, but I, I feel like it'll be okay. Hey, health orb, though. Oh, ate that one. Didn't even see it coming. Like a goober, I just walked into it. Let me see if I can stack up a little bit of damage on this turd. Oh, he jumped into the pro I right, jumped into the projectile. Cool. Oh, mini boss down. Little heal right there to take care of the damage that we took. You probably noticed, but we have like half the health that Aerok has. Uh, enemies killed by your Hellbreak give 30% more souls. When killing an enemy, have a chance to restore your artifact energy. I'll probably go with that one because I do tend to Hellbreak a lot, so... I, I think we should make a decent amount of souls out of that. Uh, we can go. I've never seen the Pounder Gallows, so let's go to the Pounder Gallows. I guess it sort of implies like who's getting pounded here. Could be me, it could be them, but... Oh, I missed both of them. Well, damn. Don't I just feel like, yeah, this is definitely, this is definitely some pounders in here. Oof. Nope, don't like that at all. Oh, it comes back down. I thought it was gonna come from the bottom. Okay, fair enough. Let's see, if he fires a projectile right there, this is going to get really slimy really fast. Uh, we still got the vault, so we didn't miss out too much right there. Maybe I should try destroying the vault with my Hellbreak and see if the bonus applies to the vault, too. I think that's actually kind of an appealing question that I'd like to have answered. That's one of those little meta things. Oof, we got the Annihilator Claw. Nice. Uh, we fire projectiles now when we Hellbreak, so that's pretty sweet. We got combustion, makes us explode when we take damage, free resurrection, increase your attack power for every enemy around you. I don't particularly like any of these options, but you know, we're out of time anyways. My name is Splattercat, this is Rising Hell. As close to a perfect game as maybe I can say. Uh, it does, you know, have its control issue, but that being said, uh, I think this game is really, really good in terms of visual design, in terms of sound design. You get that feeling that you're inside an old arcade with kind of the echoey effects that they put on everything. Uh, it, it definitely gives you that feeling of being kind of at Scandia playing a coin-op game from the noises. And, you know, sound design is important. I think sound design is actually one of the most critically underrated parts of game design that, like, frequently gets ignored. If you could cease firing, ah, oh, weak. I say, if you could cease firing your balls at me, I'd appreciate it. That'd be like super good. Ah, well, we'll finish off Dagon here. But my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for a while. I, I don't normally try to speak glowingly about games just because I think every game can be improved upon. Uh, but really the only thing I see with this game is maybe just more stuff to unlock. You know what I mean? 
And, and like that comes down to one of those things that the game is so finely polished and kind of balanced that uh, adding new items might disrupt that. So I don't know. Uh, I can't think of a whole lot of things to complain about here. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the Indie Skillet. Bye, everybody.